This conference will now be recorded. Hello, students. So, need two thousand twenty four course. Now we are doing chapter number five, morphology of flowering plants, and we have covered some portions. And you know, in each syllabus, what are all portions we need to learn uh, morphology and modifications, then about tissues, then different. Uh, parts of a flowering plant like root stem leaf and about inflorescence and different types of inflorescence you need to learn and especially for practical exam you will meet the uh, same families for uh, um, studying different parts of that flower and that family uh, particular to that family what are all characters are there so here we are learning about few families like malvasi cruciferaceae uh, graminae compositae leguminosae and all these things we are learning so we can see some special features among all these things then uh, we have already covered uh, the portion root so in that we have learned about uh, the tap root, fibrous root, and adventitious root, and the modifications in that. And we have learned the structure of root uh, or root tip, and different modifications, modified roots we have learned. And in that, uh, this respiratory roots or uh, pneumatophores are very important. And for each one tap root modifications, in that also with the example you need to learn different types. And your respiratory roots are also very important. Then adventitious root in that also. You can learn then the climbing roots, foliar roots, annulated one. All these things you need to learn. For everything, you need to learn one example. Okay. Then next, now root portion we have already done, and now we are going to do the uh, stem portion. Okay. So we are learning about stem. So stem, we know that. See if you are drawing a plant. Like this, this is the root portion you whatever you are drawing, right? And this is a stem portion. And like this, here flowers, everything you will draw. So roots, we know the function and types or the uh, different types of roots, everything. Now stem, which is the part of the axis, right? What is a stem? Let's see. Ascending part, right? And it's bearing branches. You can see leaves, flowers. On stem, you can see the branches, right? If it is a very big plant, you can see the branches. Then there you can see what uh, which is having that leaves. Branch will be having flowers, leaves, then fruits, all those things, right? And we said root is developing from, from where root is developing, that is from radical. The root and the shoot develop plumule. Terminating, it's developing from radical and shoot that is developing from plumule of embryo uh, for germinating seed. And that shoot system that will be having nodes and internodes, right? In shoot, you can see nodes and internodes, right? So uh, nodes and internodes will be present. And what is node? Node is the region where auxiliary buds. Or the leaves, which and all you can see. On nodes, what you can see? Buds, auxiliary buds, then leaves, all these are arising from nodes. These are arising from 
nodes and what is an internode internode is the region between two nodes see here leaves or leaf buds you can see and here also this is another place you can see this leaf buds so this is auxiliary buds and leaves which are arising from node so here you can see the space between two nodes or that is the uh, region between two nodes that is called as internode internode is the region between two nodes inter in between inter nodes in between two nodes okay the space or the region between two nodes that is called as internodes okay and here on the basis of function and structural modification here stem that can be categorized into many types like underground or subterranean stem then aerial or epiterranean stem uh, then subaerial or uh, prostrate stem all these are that is based on function and structural modification right based on function and structural modification stem that is classified into different types or categorized in two different types first one is underground underground stem modification that is otherwise called as subterranean stem then aerial stem and subaerial sorry sub aerial aerial and underground okay so here first let's see the underground modifications so here see this type of modifications or underground stem modification generally that is for food storage okay generally for food storage you can see this underground stem modifications okay and uh, that is also it is helping for vegetative propagation vegetative propagation okay and there are four types of this underground stem modifications first one is bulb uh, bulb here you can see uh, this is disc shaped stem disc shaped and that will be having adventitious roots at the lower side adventitious roots at lower side and they'll be having scale leaves okay and on the upper side it will be having scale leaves see for this for everything bulb means which one you will remember first garlic or onion right so general features you can write from this it will be disc shaped almost and adventitious roots where it will be present on garlic on the down side or the lower side and scale leaves will be present right so onion and garlic these are the examples next type is rhizome here you can see rhizome which is ginger turmeric all these are the example for rhizome okay so that forms actually horizontally running stems you know under soil which how it will be you can see 
it will be somewhat hard or thick right so horizontally running stem and that will be having nodes and internodes then buds will be there you can see while getting from shop itself you can check that some slight green color portion will be there which is giving rise to buds and scaly leaves which are used for vegetative propagation that scaly leaves will be there and these buds and scaly leaves which are used that we will plan for the next generation right so ginger and turmeric all these are the examples for which one rise up next is comb third type is comb see that is condensed structure comb it's very big and condensed structure and that grows vertically see like this so that grows vertically in the soil and that will be having scale leaves for color, example colocation and all you can see vertically it will grow and that also will be having colocation uh, sorry uh, scale leaves so example is colocation you can see the next is tuber 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 you know to for that example is best example is potato this is tuber and this is comb so like there several types are there okay uh, potato that is example for tuber shaped and that doesn't have a particular shape but it is having a swollen body and randomly it will be having that eyes potato eyes we will say right like that will be sprouting portion so potato eyes we will say for that so example potato for tuber which is the example best example potato okay and here in some other cases we can see uh, aerial aerial type of stem modification aerial type we said right aerial type that is our otherwise called as epiterranean stem and these are also of different types uh, stem tendril then philoclad stem thorn cladod bulbil all these are the example for aerial stem modifications okay so stem tendril in some plants which is having weak stem so plants which are having weak stem there you can see apical bud that will be modified into tendril okay their apical bud will modify apical bud or axillary bud here you can see that is modified into tendrils and that is helping for climbing okay it helps for climbing purpose okay so the bud is modi getting modified into tendril forms and that tendrils are helping for climbing so here example you can learn cucumber is the example see here you may get a question like cucumber is the example for which type of modification stem tendril aerial stem modification and that shows stem tendrils okay or you will get several options and for stem tendril which is the best example so almost the known plants you should learn as a example so that you will get the exact feature okay so cucumber and another example is passiflora passiflora these are the examples then philoclad here in philoclad you can see see this is the see here you can see another one stem tendril here the stem that is modified into tendril okay so that is helping for climbing that's what we said now philoclad you know here you can see the philoclad 
in this stem is modified into here stem is modified into flat one here you can see stem is modified into flat and that will be fleshy we know that it will be fleshy and green leaf like structure this is a leaf like structure and it is fleshy and green color too right so example examples are the main thing which you need to learn opentia opentia is the example for philoclad and Rescus, another one, another example. Next is stem thorn. Okay, stem thorn. See, stem thorn. Here you can see the stem. Example is. Bogan Villa. Here, axle of the leaf, leaf axle or apex of the branch that will get modified into pointed structures. Here you can see in Bogan Villa, it's very clear pointed structures will be there and that is called as thorn. So, example in citrus also you can see citrus and in Bogan Villa, you can see this stem thorn. Next is clad out. Clad out. Okay. So this clad out, that is a type of phyllo clad, which is consisting. Phyllo clad, we said, right? So phyllo clad here, this clad out is also a special type of phyllo clad and that is having one internode. And here the stem that will be modified into leaf-like structures. And in clad old example is asparagus. In that you can see the clad old, uh, which is a special type of fellow clad. And that is having one internode. Next is bulbil. See, in bulbil, example is oxalis. This is oxalis plant. Example for bulbil. Here you can see multicellular structure and that functions as an organ for vegetative reproduction. Okay. So, that is oxalis. See, here you can see this is a stem. So, from that many are arising. So, this we can use for vegetative reproduction and root will arise from that portion also, right? So, multicellular structure which is function as, so these are the bulbils which is functioning as the organ of vegetative reproduction. Oxalis and one more example, Dioscoria. That is one more example for this. Okay. Next is about subaerial or prostrate stem. Okay. See, the, here also you can see the bulbil. This is a stem and this is the bulbil structure. And this is used for vegetative propagation. Okay. Next, what about this um, subaerial or prostrate stem? Offset. In that also different types are there. Sub-aerial. In that offset is there. See offset means that is short one and horizontal branch. And that will be having bunch of leaves. On which side? On upper portion. Clear? On upper portion, uh, bunch of leaves will be there. 
but on the lower portion you can see leaves so pistia icornia all these are the examples for which one offset examples are icornia and pistia all these are example next is stolon stolon is another example here the stem modification that initially that stem will grow upward okay then it will form an arc structure then it will come down and that develops the daughter plants okay so when it is coming in contact with soil that forms a daughter plant or that develops a daughter plant so here for that stolen example we can say strawberry collocation or first it grow grow upward then when it is coming in contact with soil it will form a new plant so here the plant will be there and here so like this it will go then again it will come in contact with the soil so that develops a new plant your root will develop so it gives a new plant give rise to a new plant so that is the stolon colocasia then strawberry these are the examples next comes runner okay see runner means that will be weak stem or weak branch which is growing horizontally above the soil surface runner means it doesn't have any other capacity it can only run through the soil right so it may be weak stem or the branch of stem which is growing horizontally above the soil and that develops adventitious root that will run only it will move like this it will be having leaves and other things and it can develop adventitious root at each node okay so oxalis hydrocotyl all these are the examples for runner okay next comes sucker see sucker means that grows horizontally under the soil so initially uh, it will be having horizontal growth under the soil and later that will grow upward okay example mint rose then chrysanthemum all these are example for sucker so generally here we need to say about the functions of stem what are all the functions of stem what is the function of a stem actually stem that supports leaves Uh, branches flowers fruits and first one is support so it will be supporting just imagine one stem what it will do it is giving supportive function for leaves branches flowers fruits and all then water conduction it is helping for the conduction of water and minerals through uh, through the plant body or from uh, root it is helping to move the water and nutrients to the leaves and uh, branches and it is finally helping for the synthesis of food right and we said that is bearing fruits flowers and all and that is performing various secondary functions like now we have learned about several stem modifications right so it is having se uh, several functions like storage then vegetative propagation all these are performed by which one stem clear so that's all about stem we need to learn so here also you need to learn the examples examples are important for each type of modification next comes the leaf about leaf we need to learn see we know that leaf how it will be so like this one structure right generally we can draw a leaf structure like this so here leaf means it's a lateral one right lateral 
and generally it is a flattened structure uh, which is born on the stem right on stem it will be present which one leaf and where it will develop it will develop at the node right this is a node and there the leaf is developing and a typical leaf we can say that consists of uh, three main parts which are the three main parts of a typical leaf that means leaf base will be there so this leaf base that is this leaf base with the help of that leaf base only it will be attached to the stem then petiole petiole that is a stalk of the leaf that is connecting the lamina of this is the lamina of leaf leaf lamina and this is base leaf base this is the lamina portion and what about the petiole this is petiole petiole portion which is connecting the lamina with the stem or its branch and lamina is otherwise called as leaf blade okay so this is the green and expanded part of leaf which is having veins leaf veins you can see right and apart from all these some plants have stipules at the leaf base okay so here you can see the veins and again it is getting rebranched so that is vein and veinlet then this is the mid rib right mid rib then these are the veins leaf blade we said leaf blade or lamina and leaf margin sometimes it will be flat and sometimes it will be like this different shapes of leaves you can see so leaf margin and this is the leaf apex clear so that is the typical leaf structure then about the venation about the venation of leaf if you are saying distribution of veins and the veinlets in the lamina of leaf that is called as venation what is venation distribution of this veins and veinlets or the rebranching of that vein that is called as veinlet so those things are getting distributed on the leaf lamina that is called as venation and different types of venation it is there parallel venation and second type is reticulate venation okay see if the veins they are irregularly distributed see like this there is no regularity irregularly here and there it's distributed and it is rebranching however it want so that venation and the veinlets are irregularly distributed to form a network like structure see when you are uh, the dried banyan leaf and all you can check there you can see very clearly the reticulate venation right irregular distribution of all the veins and veinlets so that is like a network so this reticulate venation that is a common feature of dicot plants in dicot plant leaves you can see reticulate venation and parallel venation what it is parallel venation have you seen monocot plants like bamboo leaves and all if you are observing bamboo leaves and all you can see veins like this one is parallel to the other one like that veins you can see okay so here there is no network like structure so the veins are arranged parallel to each other veins are parallel to each other that is called as parallel venation an example in monocot plant in monocot plants you can see parallel venation okay then another one
Here you can see types of leaves, different types of leaves based on the incision of lamina. So based on the incision, incision of lamina, you can see different types of leaf. There are two types of leaves. What is that? Simple leaves and compound leaves. First one is simple leaf. And another one is compound leaf. Okay. So in simple leaves, there is a single lamina. You can see single lamina in simple leaf. Okay. And this is usually the entire one. Entire one. For example, like uh, cucurbita, then mango leaf, guava, guava. In all these things, you can see simple leaves. What about compound leaf? See, like this one whole leaf. Okay, mango leaves, and all you know that how it will be. Single lamina will be there, and that is usually the entire lamina it will form. Like common example, mango. Okay, compound leaf means in this compound leaf, what you can see the incisions of lamina. You can see there. You can see incisions of lamina. What is that actually? Incisions of lamina means those incisions that is reaching. Mid rib, okay, or maybe up to petiole, okay. Example: neem, rose, lemon, all these things. Have you observed rose plant? How the leaf will be? Like this, here will be there. Here another one will be there. So midrib is common. There is a common midrib, and you can see so many subunit-like structures, right? So here incisions are there. This incisions are there. So these incisions are not making them a separate leaf. See in neem, neem itself you can see here the big one will be there, and here you can see another one which is reaching up to the Mid rib, right? But this is a single leaf. Clear? And this compound leaf. So this is called as compound leaf. So incisions will be there that may reach up to petiole or up to mid rib. Example: neem, rose, lemon. All these are the examples. And Here the compound leaf, compound leaf that is of different types, like pinnately compound leaves, pinnately compound, so compound leaf. That is of two types: pinnately compound and palmately compound. Okay, so pinnately compound leaf. Example in neem, you can see pinnately compound leaf, and palmately compound means the leaves which is present in strawberry. That is palmately compound leaf. Okay. Then, based on the origin and the function, another classification is there. Based on origin and function, leaf again leaf is 
classified or leaves are classified into cotyledonary leaf, profils, bract leaf, floral leaf, scaly leaves, foliage leaves. All these are the classification. That is on the basis of origin and function. So based on the origin and function, leaves are classified into cotyledonary leaves. First one is cotyledonary leaves. See, in cotyledonary leaf, which is present in the form of cotyledons with seed. So for this example is resinous. Okay. Then second type is profiles. Profiles, actually these are very thin and flat leaf-like structures. Okay. Bract leaf. Third type is bract leaf. So in this, the leaves will become colored. Like a flower, it will be colored. Example, can you see? In Bougainvillea, you can see this. Euphobia, Bougainvillea and all, you can see the leaf. Leaf is actually colored. See, in Bougainvillea, you will see the colorful part, right? Pink color, orange color, white color and all, you can see. Right? Some leaf-like structures, petal-like structures, you can see. Actually, these are colored leaf and Bougainvillea's flower, actually, that will be white color and it will be a very small flower. Okay. And this petal-like or colorful part, that is a colored leaf. So, that is called as bract leaf and it is present in Euphobia, Bougainvillea and all. Next one, floral leaves. Floral leaves so floral leaves that is acting as a part of flowers uh, like petals apple and all in most of the angiosperms you can see the floral leaves then scaly leaves scaly leaves scaly leaves will be colorless or dull leaves colorless or dull okay for example in ginger and all you can see scaly leaves which are colorless and it will be very dull then foliage leaves foliage leaves you can see uh, that will be uh, in almost all the plants that will be green color and that will be having photosynthetic type leaves so these are seen in almost all the plants so based on the origin from where it is originated and based on the function there are several classification based on the origin and function of leaves so which are they bract leaf profiles cotyledonary leaf uh, floral leaves scaly leaves foliage leaves all these here also you need to learn with example okay Next is about phyllotaxy. Phyllotaxy. Okay, what is phyllotaxy? See the arrangement or the pattern of arrangement of leaf. Pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or on the branch that is called as phyllotaxy. So, phyllotaxy means how the leaves are arranged on the stem or arranged on the branch, and that is of three types. So, the arrangement is called as phyllotaxy, and it's of three types. First one is alternate type. Alternate type of phyllotaxy. Second type is opposite type of phyllotaxy. And the third one is world.
world alternate fellow taxi in alternate fellow taxi a single leaf that arises at each node okay so that will be single leaf and it will be alternating right so each node single leaf will be there and an alternate nodes this will arise right see in mangifera indica like mango hibiscus and then mustard all these things you can observe alternate phyllotaxy next opposite opposite phyllotaxy means each node give rise to two leaves see in one node this is a stem here the node is there here one leaf you can see and opposite to the on the same node you can see one more leaf but in alternate how it will be one leaf will be here another one from next node you can see another leaf next from here next node you can see another leaf like that it will be but opposite means on the same node opposite side you can see each leaf okay so two leaves like opposite to each other on the same node so each node give rise to two leaves which are lying opposite to each other example calotropis it's a common example calotropis then guava and this opposite phyllotaxy that may be superimposed opposite superimposed or opposite decussit in superimposed eugenia exora and all example for superimposed and opposite decussit means calotropis osimum all these are the example for opposite decussit then world phyllotaxy here you can see phyllotaxy in this more than two leaves arises at a node and that forms a world like structure right see this is a node means from here 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 all the sides a world like structure you can see or world form it will be there for that leaf whole leaves which are arising from the same node okay so nerium vanguria all these are examples nerium is the best one common example okay so it will form a world like structure then functions of leaves what are all the functions of leaves see leaves that performs many functions in plants like main function is photosynthesis right what is the main function of leaf photosynthesis then you know stomata will be present so stomata means that will be helpful for gaseous exchange right then uh leaves that will protect terminal bud axillary bud and all then vascular bundles which are present in the veins and petiole that will carry out the function of conduction then modified leaf structures that is performing several functions like uh, storage support vegetative reproduction all these things are done um, by the leaves so these are the main functions of leaves clear the leaf modifications we need to learn modification actually leaf tendril hope you have heard about leaf tendrils like green thread like structures and that do not have scale leaves and that will be unbranched and 
that will be for uh, climbing like uh, support or for climbing that is for supporting the weak stem see like tendrils you can see in pumpkin cucumber and all you can see this kind of structures tendril like structures and whole leaf tendril that is another one see here the leaf tendril that will form whole leaf and that function is like uh, the function uh, that take uh, taken over by the foliaceous stipules okay so in wild pea you can see example whole leaf tendril wild pea you can see the structure then leaflet tendril is there that, that means only the upper leaflets will get modified into leaflet tendrils leaflet tendril in that uppermost leaflets or uppermost uh, leaflets will only will get modified into uh, leaf tendrils so for example uh, pisum sativum pea plant okay Then another type spine. See the whole leaf or the parts of leaf will get modified into spine. That may be for protective function or for uh, preventing the excess loss of water or for uh, preventing transpiration. So it will form a spine-like structure. See opentia. In opentia, you can see whole leaf is getting modified, right? And in acacia stipules, you can see. Next is succulent. So in those, the leaves become fleshy and that will become thickened and that, that form is coming because they need to retain water in hot condition and in such arid climates and all. Okay, so aloe, aloe vera you have seen, bryophyllum, all these are succulent plants. Then insect catching leaves are there. right so these leaves they'll catch insect and they'll absorb their nitrogen to fulfill the plants nitrogen requirement and uh, that may use for the storage sometimes this will be this kind of leaves will be used for storage function also pitcher plant pitcher plant have you seen they are catching the leaves are modified into pitchers so that they can catch the insects and they can digest those things. Nepenthes is best example that is called as pitcher plant. Then bladder. In those leaf segments are forming bladder and that is also acting as trapping part for the insect. Right. So these are the main modifications of what leaves. Right, some other modifications are there like phyllode, hooks, reproductive modifications are there, leaf fruits, then heterophily is there, leaf scales are there that we have. Phyllode means a flat portion or the petiole uh, that will be flat, green, and that will be the photosynthetic part like uh, acacia and all. Right, hooks means terminal leaflet that will be claw like. In bignonia, asparagus, and all claw like structure of leaves, you can see. Then reproductive leaves are there, like adventitious buds, they will form, and that can work as vegetative or the for vegetative reproduction that will work. So, bryophyllum and salvinia, in those, and all you can see such kind of leaves. The leaf roots, like roots emerging from one of the Uh, this leaves uh, ranunculus in that you can see roots emerging from one out of three leaves okay then heterophily that means more than one type of leaf on the same plant heterophily more than one type of leaf heterophily that is a hetero means different types of leaves on the same plant, 
that uh, occurs on uh, rhizome, combs, and all, philoclad, cladode, and all. Okay, the leaf scales. What is leaf scale? Thin and membranous, and that is sessile. So leaf scales. That is another modification of leaf. Leaf scales that you can see on ginger and all, right? Scaly leaves will be there. So here we need to learn uh, the functions of leaf. What is a leaf? Um, then the parts or the structure of a leaf. Then about the venation. There are two types of venation. Uh, simple leaves. Uh, sorry, parallel venation and reticulate venation. Then types of leaves are there. Simple leaves and compound leaves. And based on the origin and function also classification is there. Cotyledony leaves, profiles. Then bract leaf, floral leaf, scaly leaves, foliage leaves and all. Right? Then phyllotaxy, the arrangement of leaf on the stem. That is there. Alternate phyllotaxy is there. Opposite phyllotaxy is there. And world phyllotaxy is also there. Okay? Then we need to learn about the functions of leaf. Clear? So these are the main things with example. Everything you need to learn with example. What is tendril? Whole leaf tendril. Leaflet tendril, stipular tendril, uh, then leaf apex tendril. All this we need to learn with example. Then leaf, another modification is spine. Then succulent, then insect catching leaf. In that picture, plan and bladder, both we need to do both modifications we need to learn. Then other types of modification we said hooks, then leaf roots, heterophily, load, uh, leaf scales, all these are the other modifications. So in this also, you make a table, just learn, uh, write general points like function and what is uh, functions of leaf and uh, what is that. If any structure you need to learn, that also you learn with the help of a diagram. Remaining things and all better to make make it in a table, uh, tabular form so that it will be easy for you to get the idea or to get the points of that. What is that? And example, one example for that, which is giving a clear idea about that concept. Clear? And next, we will be learning about uh, different inflorescence, the arrangement of flower, inflorescence. And after that, inflorescence, we need to, in that itself, we need to learn like uh, um, floral parts. So we'll learn about uh, different floral parts, then uh, the placentation and about some families general features of some important families we'll learn okay then we need to answer a few questions from the previous question papers so this is also a very easy chapter for you people because there is no indirect question only thing is you need to know about the examples clear so in the next class, we'll learn about the flower. Thank you.